Shalom, this is Rev Yahar Ben Emet with another a special edition of the Torah Watchman Show. Straight from you, from the Talmud, yes, from our sacred oral tradition, the writings of all the sages and rabbis passed over centuries of time, since the time of our exile in Babylonia, and even before, all the way back to the time when Abraham learned from God that he must have a bread. He must be circumcised and all the men in his tent. Let me uh, speak to you some context of something that God reached out to me and I want to share with you. Okay? Um, when, during my reading during Shabbat, I was reading in uh, my, my Talmud tractate by the name of Sanhedrin. Okay? This is uh, chapter 40. This is the section of 43 Bravo, okay? It's actually chapter 6. And the section, if you want to look it up, is called Negmar Hadin. There is a story here that's often overlooked. And I know it's not taught uh, to Christians at church by pastors. That's the devil in details, and it's where I'm going. And reading about, uh, about these stories and commentaries here, essentially, it was talking about capital punishment talking about what it means to actually stone a person to death, what warrants capital punishment by stoning, and then the last acquittal process where you have witnesses, you have testimonies and things like that, even to the day that the execution be carried out. If you have a crier or someone on a horse waving a flag to get the attention of the judges there, that, that acquittal process, the execution process itself can be stalled temporarily and then... Uh, until the judges come together and review all the information. Is, is God fair? Of course he is. But something I want to point out here is taken from the book of Joshua. And if you want to read with me, uh, Joshua chapter 7, I believe. And we're going to start reading here about something horrific that happened in Israel during the time of Joshua. Everyone remembers uh, when Joshua entered the land of Canaan that he conquered the city of Jericho. Okay, that was a great and miraculous battle against that mighty Canaanite city of giants. Okay, but there was an individual at this time by the name of, of Achan. Yes, Achan. And um, he was actually from the tribe of Yehuda, believe it or not. Now, God notified Yahshua that if you, if you do not remove this cursed thing from your midst, you will not read. You will not win any more victories against the Canaanites. Of course, God led him to the tent of Achan and, and called him out from his camp of Yehuda and asked him what's happening. Because you know uh, there is a general accusation. Probably people saw what Achan was doing. Long story short, he collected some of the booty that was not allowed from Jericho. Jericho was, a was so evil of a city that its ruin was, was, became desolation among, upon the land of Canaan that a city would never be allowed to be built in that spot again. So uh, the gold and everything else, the Babylonian um, artifacts and things of like that nature that was in that city, uh, that was conquered by that, by that Canaanite city, uh, the shackles of gold and silver, wealth and all this, you know, Achan uh, envied all this gold. It led to lust. It led to hoarding. Of course, it allowed him 
uh, to get to a point where he was worthy of capital punishment. Okay, I'm going to read from you from the uh, Mishnah portion here. So the scenario was is that again Yahshua was notified by Hashem that a curse was growing like a cancerous plague upon the nation of Israel, and if the curse was not removed, a cleansed. It was a, a spirit of uncleanliness upon the tribal Israel at that time. They would never win another victory against the Canaanites. So, of course, Yahshua wanted to find out what it was. So he went to the tribe of Yehuda and talked to this individual by the name of Akka. Okay? So, um, again, in the story of Halakha, and that when a condemned person... Condemned person is given every right as an innocent person has never been convicted to make full testimony of what happened and what he's been accused of, okay, among his peers. But he was convicted of stoning by his by his people, okay? Um, but even the, the convicted uh, criminal who confessed his sins, and the whole point, the whole point of capital punishment is not to have vengeance or a blood feud or something like that. The whole point of it is to, to humble that individual that's about to be uh, executed to confess their sins and uh, Achan was given this opportunity and it's so important and so critical that it's recorded in, in, the, in the book of Yahshua in chapter 7 you can read these verses here um, uh, verse, verse 14 uh, verse 17 and so on you can read along with that that this lesson of truth is very important for today okay it talks about the atonement of sins of someone who is executed, or someone is given capital judgment for an execution that's pending. Okay? The point I'm trying to make is here that this individual could have chosen not to confess his sins. Even in the United States court system, when someone has committed a, a, a capital crime and uh, they they um, lost all their acquittals, all their appeals and everything else. And the governor says, no, this person uh, will be executed and no one intervenes and whatever. They're offered the last will and testament, okay? If you're a Christian or whatever, you're a Roman priest or whatever, uh, a Roman Catholic priest, uh, they're given an opportunity to confess their sins. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But for the Jews, a lot, a lot different here. First of all, let me say here is that nothing would keep Achan uh, from uh, dying from, from from his sins nothing would keep this capital punishment of execution by stoning um, to be um, to be nullified he had earned this judgment upon himself and no one else could take his place it's, you can read about this in Yeshua okay and pretty soon you know where I'm coming so uh, Yeshua says confess your sins and as a general practice of all uh, co convicted prisoners, people committed capital crimes, like um, an individual uh, picking up uh, sticks and lumber to create a fire on Shabbat, capital crimes, adultery, and other things like that, idol worship. Uh, his crime, of course, was that he took something from a cursed city that was prohibited, prohibited any, no one in Israel was allowed to retrieve anything from that cursed city. It was that evil. But Achan, uh, of the tribe of Yehuda, believe it or not, he took it upon himself. He took these things into his tent. And then they, they talked to Achan out, and he, he, was, he felt guilty conscious. He knew what was happening. He knew there was a curse upon Israel. He heard the judges talking about this. He heard Yeshua probably speaking as a public speaker in front of all tribal Israel that we cannot move from this spot until we figure out what's happening. Well, Achan did confess his sins, okay? Now, what's important to understand here is that uh, uh, even though Yahshua said, My son, please give honor to Hashem, God of Israel, and give confession to him. Scripture states, And Achan answered Yahshua and said, In truth, I have sinned against Hashem, God of Israel. And thus, and thus, etc., I have done. So he explained everything he did. You can find the evidence of my crime in my tent. These things had to be utterly destroyed in his tent. His tent probably had to be burned to the ground, okay? And all these things too. So stay with me. So Akka did confess his sins, okay? But it did not nullify the capital punishment 
of the, the of crime of the death penalty against him, okay? So, so now where do we know that the confession of Aachen brought him atonement? That's, that, these are comments here by sages and the tractate Sanhedrin, um, section 43, Bravo, in chapter 6. This is the challenge of the Gemara, which is the Halakha, the Sanhedrin court, that actually addresses all these many debates and all these uh, opinions of other sages that tries to reach a final conclusion. No one other than Akan could atone for his sins. Now, I get this right here, okay? So, um, um, Yahshua pointed out, you have ruined us. Why did you ruin us? Why did you do this? What possessed you with this great evil, okay? Now, people have probably been killed because they lost battles with Canaanite tribes because this happened. The sin is upon on your head, Achan, and your family. God shall ruin you this day. In other words, his life will end. He will have no opportunity in this world of the living to correct his horrible, horrible legacy and reputation. Okay? Achan to this day is a curse, uh, even in Israel. And I believe there's a group of stones to this day at that spot where Jericho uh, once existed. Okay? But here, in conclusion, is the hope of every individual even the worst of sinners uh, that uh, that God had wanted to drive home to Yahshua. He said, you have ruined us, you have ruined your home, you ruined your family's reputation, you ruined your ability to have more children, to uh, improve your, your legacy, uh, the horrible legacy of your name. But even though you've ruined your life today, in the world to come, you will not be ruined. Is it that such a wonderful and blessed testimony and hope to anyone out there in this world? Hopefully, you never commit a crime like Aachen did, uh, worthy of capital punishment. But any sins you have committed in your past, I want you to know your sins upon your head. There's no Messiah that will save you. There is no one who will save you other than God's holy judgment. God's judgment upon your life is final. According to his Torah, his holy commandments, the 613 misspoke, but it's up to you to nullify that judgment to that your life may be ruined completely. You may be in bankruptcy, may, may have lost your wife and marriage and children, may have lost your home, you may be in prison, you may be homeless, you may be totally destitute because of the sins of your life, drug addiction, alcoholism, DW, whatever it may be, okay? Whatever it may be. But in the life to come, in the life to come, you will enjoy redemption and atonement because you confessed your sins. If you don't believe uh, Rev. Yahar ben Emmet and this uh, Talmudic uh, uh, exposition, this Mishnah, read as Azekel chapter, chapter 18. It's 21 to 23. It doesn't matter what you've done in your life. If you have a sincere and contrite heart and you can honestly and sincerely confess your sins to God and among the people you've injured and, and ruined uh, and you make recompense to them, you give to DACA and charity to show you're sincerely wrong, God will forgive you. There's no need for any kind of human sacrifices a Mashiach to die for your sins, to drink of his blood, to eat of his body, to go to a Catholic priest behind a black box and confess your sins, to pray with rosary beads. None of this is required other than you to take liability, ownership of your sins in your life and confess to not only God, confess to those people you're wrong. And that's probably the hardest thing. You may go to sleep at night and whisper, I am sorry, God. But listen, when the real atonement begins is when you confess your sins to other people and when you make re recompense to the wrong people you have wronged and injured and hurt. May we all say, oh man, this is Rabbi Yar ben Emmet signing out to another special edition of Torah Watchman Show. I wish you well. Remember, I'm a lighthouse on a hill that would not be head. I'm not politically correct. 
Please share the wealth of knowledge and love and truth to everyone who's willing to hear. And if they're unwilling to hear at first time, you be that working life witness before them that will attract them like a magnet to you so you can talk about the Torah, talk about the stories of the prophets of old, and show them their life lessons thousands of years ago can help you in your decision-making today. May we all say all mine, and may the Mashiach come quickly in our time.